Warm greetings from the centre of Bristol. Bristol has been a melting pot of cultures for centuries. In fact, for over half a millennium, starting with early wool trading in medieval times to Flemish, French and Italian traders, to the discovery of North America by John Cabot in 1497, using this boat here, the Matthew, which has been reconstructed and lives in the Bristol Harbour now. Having accidentally discovered North America whilst attempting to sail to the far east in a westwards direction, Cabot's voyage, which at the time was deemed a failure by King Henry VII and the merchant venturers of Bristol who had funded it, this route actually went on to be used for the next three centuries as the main link between Europe and North America, enabling trading and cultural exchanges to take place and directly resulting in Great Britain becoming rich and powerful during that time. After the Second World War, there was mass migration from Caribbean colonies to the United Kingdom and to Bristol, known as the Windrush generation from the ship that was used. With the offer of jobs, they arrived ready to work and bringing their culture too. The social mix of the city is one of close communities it's a city that's big enough to be interesting and diverse, but small enough that people meet and are exposed to the different sides of the city. In general, people are aware of what's going on. In 1982, a young artist called 3D, after a visit to New York, brought graffiti art to Bristol by painting the first graffiti pieces on the streets here. This was two years before anywhere else. For the young people who saw his work on the streets, it would capture their imagination, impressed by its size, the colors he used and the locations that he chose. Suddenly a generation of teenagers found inspiration. They got spray cans and the Bristol graffiti scene had begun in advance of any other city in the UK. But before long, after a number of run-ins with the authorities, 3D was on his last warning from the police and with the fear of jail time, decided to hang up his spray cans and concentrate on his music career as co-founder of the internationally acclaimed culture spanning pop music band, Massive Attack. A few years later, a youth worker called John Nation started the UK's first legal graffiti painting project at Barton Hill Youth Centre, where he worked as a youth worker. This was unique as it enabled the artist to paint freely and safely without fear of arrest, enabling artistic expression and experimentation to develop, spawning a greater depth in the art form. A young 10 year old remembers seeing the work of 3D on the streets whilst he traveled by bus and as he got older he began to make visits to Barton Hill and watch the older artists painting. From the sheer volume of active artists, Bristol became the most painted city in the UK. There was an explosion of graffiti art around the city, most of which was painted on properties without permission of the property owners, creating friction and conflict, resulting in the opinion of many that this was not an art movement, but rebellious and willful destruction and vandalism of other people's property. After a year of undercover surveillance, the police, Bristol City Council and Bristol Transport Police launched the biggest ever UK crackdown on illegal graffiti painting. In 1989, Operation Anderson resulted in 79 young people being arrested in dawn raids and charged with criminal damage, including John Nation, who was charged with inciting the biggest coordinated vandalism conspiracy ever known. This had a massive effect on the Bristol scene as, the, as most of those arrested were prohibited from ever painting again. The artists who remained were the most determined to continue and did so in full knowledge that the jail time awaited if they were ever to be arrested and so the Bristol scene went underground. These were the most secretive artists Bristol had ever known. The young 10 year old who was now in his late teens and had been experimenting with spray cans himself, was ready to hit the streets and joined one of the secretive underground graffiti crews. Before long, it became clear that this young artist who called himself Banksy was different. When he made suggestions about public locations where they could paint, the other members of the crew thought he was joking, only he wasn't. 
and days later he painted these locations alone. The first significant painting that alerted the people of Bristol to this new emerging artist was when he took revenge on the role that Bristol City Council had played in trying to destroy the Bristol graffiti scene in Operation Anderson. He left a painting in the middle of their central Bristol office building, and he even put his name on it. Called Pulling the Plug, the painting was a comment to shut down the council or pull the plug on them. No one could believe that an artist had painted there, and in doing so, Banksy was laying the blueprint for the next level of art on the streets. Good planning, secrecy, high profile location, and an image based artwork that had narrative, humor, and a social comment which was different from traditional graffiti of large colorful lettering. Before long, Banksy had moved to London and was leaving his work around the east where he lived. The well-connected but heavily undeveloped borough of Shoreditch was the perfect canvas and his paintings in London reached a larger audience. His art was different and new. It was meant to directly engage with the public, asking them for their opinion or to react and to spend moments to contemplate its meaning. Banksy presented his work to be accessible and easy to understand and interpret while addressing important and serious issues. He was using the streets as his gallery and everyone was invited. He was breaking down the barriers to art and destroying the traditional elitism associated with art galleries and highbrow modern art, making art that was for the people. Banksy was using his secrecy and skill of a graffiti artist to get in and out without being caught. He was a social activist and he used the power of the image to make statements and emphasize social issues in order to engage with the public. All of this combined to make a very powerful individual and he was doing all of this anonymously and was reaching millions of people. He had defined what a modern artist should aspire to be and before long, street art was present in every urban environment on the globe. It was a revolution and for the, for the first time in modern history, this was the people's art, the biggest art movement in human history.